today I want to share something simple that I would call a, a best kept secret in our Christian experience. These things that we share are quite important um, to our Christian experience. While I speak, Victoria, give me Daniel chapter number one. Daniel chapter number one on the screen. Daniel one on the screen. Let me know when you have it. Daniel chapter number one. You see, what makes entrepreneurs in Christ different is the fact that our teachings are tailored to your walk as a kingdom entrepreneur and as a marketplace minister. Um, and that's how you can grow by learning what we are teaching here and practicing it. It's not okay to just hear what we say. It's equally important to practice it, to practice what you learn. Yeah, give it to me, New King James Version. Uh, New King James Version will be my preferred method of reading the scriptures today. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercies. I ask that you speak to your people through me, through my vocal cords. Take over my vocal cords. Speak to them. Teach them. Teach us your ways, your words, and your will. Increase so that I may decrease. Let people be strengthened in their Christian experience. Let the Christ be revealed in various dimensions. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite your presence. Let the spirit of witness, let it flow. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. amen 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 guys if you have your bibles with you daniel chapter number one if you have a friend that you love you care for and you pray for share this link with them this may bless them what i'm about to share and so one of the ways we help people carry their burdens is by sharing the word of God with them so that they can carry their own burdens in the proper way, proper posture. All right, I want to speak briefly today on what I will call the power of your consecration. <laughs> the power of your consecration. Many of us have heard of the term called consecration. We, we've heard about it, we know about it. Some of us consecrate, some of us don't. Um, in any way, consecration, we know, is supposed to be a part of the um, lifestyle of a Christian. And, um, but we've not been taught adequately exactly what it can do for you. Why consecrate? What exactly does it do? What is the benefit of it? You see, the reason why the Spirit of God has told me to teach on this is because every anointing, that we have spoken about, I should have you know that um, 
even if God gives it to you and you don't have a consecration back in you, you will not be able to maximize it. You will not be able to retain it. You will not be able to walk in it powerfully. You won't. This is why consecrations are important. And I want to explain it from a simple standpoint. So help me God. So that we can all benefit from it. Can we just take a quick minute to ask God to open our hearts today to help us understand his word. Just in your own quiet corner, just pray. Ask God that your heart be open to help you understand his words. That your heart be open. Just pray. Just a minute to pray. A minute to pray. A minute to pray. Pray, 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 pray. All right, let's read. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the third year of the reign of Je Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. From verse 3 is where I want you to pay attention. It's a long reading, but we need to read it. We need to read it. Um, um, okay. Verse 3. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his hewn Enoch, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had the ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. Guys, I want you to take note of the qualifications. Hmm. Powerful qualifications. Young men, one, no blemish, two, good looking three gifted in all wisdom four possessing knowledge five quick to understand six who had the grace to serve in the king's palace seven who might teach the language and literature of the chaldean so they could learn this language eight and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king hmm. now from among those of the sons of judah were daniel hananiah mishael and azariah to them the chief of the eunuchs gave names he gave daniel the name belteshazzar to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, he gave the name Abednego. Verse 8 is a scripture that everybody should memorize if you are a true marketplace minister. <laughs> if you have a longing for God to host his presence and to experience each of the 12 anointings that we have described this year at entrepreneurs in christ i want you to know that verse number eight is a verse you can replace with your name it is the key that unlocks the anointings you crave but damola proposed in his heart 
that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your, your faces looking worse? Some translation says, looking morose <laughs> than the young men who are your age. Then you would endanger my head before the king. Um, verse 11 says, So Daniel said to the steward, to whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you, and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of ten days, the Bible says, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Verse 17 says, As for these four young men, the Bible says God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Verse 18 says, Now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them. The king interviewed them. And among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. And thus, Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel continued till the first year of King Cyrus. So guys, this long reading was necessary to explain the concept of consecration <laughs> and i want you to pay special attention as i try to break this thing down because this thing has not been fully understood now if you're a part of the prayer leadership class we teach this in great detail but i realized that we have not formally taught this topic to members of entrepreneurs in Christ who are trying to be discipled to be kingdom entrepreneurs and marketplace ministers. Now, not everybody is a part of the prayer training. And that's why the Holy Spirit prompted me to share what I'm sharing today. The power of your consecration. The power of your consecration. Give me another scripture, Victoria. Give me Romans 12, verse 1. Romans, leave the scripture open. I will refer back to it. Give me another scripture. Romans 12, verse number 1. Romans 12, verse number 1. 
once again if you have a friend that you want to help grow you can share this link with them so that they can actually help themselves um are you there let me share the okay. screen again who is sharing is it victoria or seme it's seme all right quickly let's move fairly fast romans 12 verse number one another scripture that every single person on this call that i would urge you to memorize you see many of us don't understand what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong in our christian walk it's not like you're in school and there is a principal that can come and say you fail this course or you are doing this thing wrong and they mark your 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 exam papers and they can tell you specifically what you are doing wrong we don't have that grace that chance in fact the bible trying to help you understand how this is meant to be done please if there is noise don't just mute i don't do noise we have to examine ourselves that's what the scripture says study to show yourself approved and the best that our spiritual experience offers us i'm waiting on you Senna, is that we are given teachers preachers apostles prophets evangelists after god's heart who can give us a glimpse at what we are doing right or wrong one of my mentors puts it this way a good sermon should either make you mad glad or sad <laughs> a good sermon should make you either mad make you glad or make you sad in all of that i hope you can find a reflection of yourself in the mirror of the person's words so that you know what you are doing if it's right if it's wrong and how you can better host the dimensions of god thank you the bible says in romans 12 verse number one what happened to the scriptures guys put it back on the screen please all right to save us time i think i'm on my own today i'm gonna just read it myself the apostle paul says i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service so you are to present your body and the condition of the presentation for it to be acceptable unto god according to this scripture it has to be holy it has to be holy others may do their own as unholy consecrations hmm. yours has to be holy and when you do it the proper way the bible calls this your reasonable act of service you may wonder what is paul talking about reasonability why is this reasonable the fact that you consecrate and all of a sudden he calls this a reasonable act what is so reasonable about this act what is reasonable about it You see, consecration is no different than when a man goes to marry a wife. You find a damsel, a beautiful woman, you propose to her, you bring her into your home, and then 
as an act of that woman's reasonability, she cuts off dating or seeing other men. She cuts it off to focus on her new groom. It can now be said that this woman is reasonable because there's a ring on her finger. And by virtue of that ring, she shuns every man that approaches her with a proposal or like we often say in Nigeria, that will toast her. <laughs> because she has now been married to one man. She has become reasonable. That's what Paul is trying to paint here. The fact that you have become the bride of Christ by virtue of accepting his sacrifice for you. He, he died for you. And because he died for you, you now see that, oh, you gave my life, you gave your life for my sake. Now I want to give my life to your cause. And the way we do that, we do it by presenting our bodies. Why the body? Why not the soul? Why not the spirit, you may ask me? It's the simple fact that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, team, I need the scriptures showing what's going on, guys. Who is showing the scriptures? Seme, Victoria? I'm sharing, sir. Is it not showing? I'm, I'm sharing, Victoria, sir. No, I can't see the scriptures. Can you please put it up online? Okay, sir. Yeah, we can't see the scriptures. So, this is how we begin to prove reasonability. A woman who has a ring on her finger, married to one man and is still dating or going on hot dates. I hope you know you're not reasonable. If the man has married you a court wedding, married you traditional style, married you in the church, the least you can do is to present your body to that man an exclusivity as a reward for what he has done for you that's what paul is talking about here now i want to look at this topic from the lens of daniel and his friends and if you understand what i'm saying today I want to assure you that your Christian experience will go to the next level. It's not a brag. This is something I practice. And so because I practice it, I've been able to see how the change has affected me. Many, many years ago, when I was still a nominal Christian, I did not know about consecration. I did not know that it was what I was missing in my Christian experience. I went everywhere. I ate everything. I drank everything. I did anything I wanted to do. This is the level that baby Christians remain at. May I tell you that your Christian experience will never move to the next level until you begin to consecrate. That's how we move from babes, being babes in the, in, in, in the body, in the word of Christ, to being mature and skillful in dividing the word of truth. Hmm. Hmm. So there are mysteries that consecration brings. And the second you begin to hunger for God. And your hunger supersedes that of a regular believer. I want you to know that the only way to fill that hunger. Is when you begin to consecrate and attract God's presence. And I'm going to examine this topic using three aspects that every kingdom entrepreneur 
and marketplace minister should consecrate to God. There are three areas. Each of them are equally important. Each of them are very powerful. And if you begin to follow this advice I'm giving you today, you would see that you would open yourself to encounters. The Spirit of God will begin to use you. And you'll be able to do what I do very easily, just like anybody else can do it. The first area is the tongue. The second area is your body. The third area is your will. The first thing I want to help us understand is why we must consecrate. You see, your human spirit was built in such a way that there are leakage points. There are leakage points in your spirit. The average person on this call is unable to trap the dimensions of God within their vessel so they can experience higher dimensions of glory, higher levels of God's glory, of His presence, of His graces, of His faithfulness. There yeah, are leakage points. If I finish teaching this message, and you went right to bed without watching TV, without talking to a friend, without speaking to anybody, and you went to bed, there's a very high chance that you will have an encounter. Very high chance. Not just with me, with any legitimate preacher or teacher of God's word. You would have an encounter because the word of God has seeped into your spirit man and you did not do anything after that. You just went right to bed. But by virtue of our human nature, many of us, after hearing the word of God, we will go make dinner, we will gist with our spouses, we will watch TV to relax, we will do something. We will try to do what regular human beings do. It is at that point that leakage begins to happen. What you have trapped within your spirit man will now begin to seep out of you. Because there are no consecrations that seal those leakages. This is true. When it pertains grace, which a believer should grow in, guys, the truth is that we diminish in grace when there is no consecration. Instead of going from glory to glory or from grace to grace, we begin to go from grace to grass. Grace was designed to multiply in line with the knowledge of Jesus Christ that you have. So the more you know Jesus, the more grace should increase. If you were functioning at the first level of the grace for favor or grace for access, when you know more about Jesus, that grace should go to level two. It should go to level three. But when there is no consecration, you won't be able to go higher in grace. The same thing with glory. You won't be able to move from one level of glory to another level of glory to, to feel the manifest presence of God because there is nothing that seals what you've taken in inside of you. Nothing seals it. You know, let me use a funny example. 
once in a while people go through a severe issue of stooling maybe you had something wrong and upset your system and you begin to stool <clears throat> and you go to the pharmacy the pharmacist in america will give you something called imodium I'm sure they have different names for it in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Kenya. They have different names for them. But when they give you that thing, it's meant to help you to stop the stooling. So that you can conceal the fluids inside of you. Because you can be dehydrated by continuous stooling. It's no different with consecration. It seals everything that you are carrying so that there are no leakage points for your spirit to, to seep out. And then you go to bed and encounters can now begin. This is how people begin to have encounters, just so you know. You have no consecrations forget encounters you have no consecrations your anointings will be at a very very low level because nobody can carry an anointing beyond their level of consecration it is spiritually impossible it's impossible the bible says in Habakkuk 2 verse 14 for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of that glory is already inside you. The Bible says the earth, you, the earth, the earthen vessel, you will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. So it's already inside of you. And each time we teach you about Jesus, it increases. But the reason why you can't tap into it is because you lack consecrations in your life. Friends, consecrations have many definitions. But amongst them is a favorite of mine, which I personally coined out. And if somebody can write this on the chat, I would appreciate it. Definition number one. Consecration is the sealing of the sealage of leakage points between the human spirit and the body. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is in your spirit, your human spirit. Between your spirit and the body, which is his temple, is your soul. Spiritual energy and power must be trapped within that three layers. Spirit, soul, and body. We do this by consecration. It is the ceiling of leakage point between the human spirit and the body. Definition number two. Consecration is a form of prayer. I want you to take your mind away from prayer, which is just uttering words before God. A person can say prayer in their heart without saying words. Prayer is 90% your heart posture. It is 10% what you say. You can learn the act of praying with your heart. And consecration is a form of you saying to your groom that has purchased you with his precious blood, I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. It's a prayer. A few months ago, a friend of mine in North Carolina invited me to dinner. 
she was married to a Caucasian man. And so we went to dinner here in Charlotte. And the guy began to tell me about the strange appetite he has to fast. He can fast for many, many days. Unusual appetite. This guy can go 14 days with no food, just water. Even I've never done that before. 14 days with no food. Doesn't break in the evening, it's just going, just going. No food, just water. And he wouldn't feel it. And then he was wondering why upon a strange appetite for fasting, he never had encounters. He never had dreams, visions, nothing, just blank. Just blank. So he was doing all that fasting and not touching God in any way. In a meeting like this, everybody is waiting for God to touch them. But your consecration is how you can touch God. And so I told him, what you lack is a consecration. The next few days, the guy talked, thought about it. He called me and said, can I just have you at dinner? Just, I want to take you to dinner. I want to learn about this concept called consecration that you spoke about. And so the guy took me to dinner and I began to teach him about consecration. <laughs> he was changed. By the time we had that finished, that two hour conversation, this guy had become a different perspective. Now determined to fast in a better way in a better way. <laughs> now, guys, consecration pertains mostly to your body. I want you to know that. But the aspect of you to derive the benefits of consecration is your spirit. It is your body that you are presenting. It is your spirit that gets the benefits or the glory. You must know that. And like I said, no man can carry an anointing upon his spirit man beyond his level of consecration. So let's look at Daniel and his companions. Is that scripture back up, guys? The first area is the tongue. I need that scripture back. Daniel chapter number one. Daniel chapter number one. Okay, so can you see you. the screen now? Yeah. Okay. So Bless you. The Bible says, Daniel proposed in his heart. Hmm. Daniel proposed in his heart. I love that scripture. If I had time, I'd have had us repeat it out loud like I always do. Verse number 8, Daniel 1, 8. This is a scripture you should never forget. But Daniel proposed in his heart. You can put your name there. But Shade proposed in her heart. But Victoria proposed in her heart. But Emmanuel proposed in his heart. That he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. Hmm. You see, the first area I want to talk about is the tongue. Daniel proposed not to taste forbidden things that were commonplace in this king's palace. Now, take note of two things. The first is that this man was in captivity. That's why I read the beginning to us. The Bible says God gave that king over to his hand. And so, Daniel and his friends were carried into captivity. That's the first thing you should notice. He was in captivity. Also, the fact that 
they had been made eunuchs. So not just that they were in captivity, these guys were now sentenced to a higher level of captivity. They were made eunuchs. And there are different reasons why they do that stuff back in the olden days. Time will fill me to explain it to us. Seeing how unfair life had treated Daniel, the least that he could have done for himself was to enjoy some pleasures. After all, sex is considered one of the highest form of pleasure a man can partake of. But now you've made me a captive and as if that were not enough, you've made him an eunuch. What then is left? The guy would have been justified to eat any and everything served to him. I hope you know. You can't sleep with a woman. You can't get married. What is left? And as if God were to just have some a slice of mercy on you, you are put in a place where you can eat the, the food that the king commands, wine and all of these things that he gave to select men that he chose. Many of us will say, ah, this is life trying to balance the equation. Let me relax and after all, something must kill a man. Having said that, let me give you a third definition or a 21st century definition of consecration. Consecration is anything God expects of you as his bride. It is his right as your groom. Anything he expects. Anything less than falls below, below that standard. It is right. It's no different how a man will marry that wife, bring her to his house, and establish the way you want to run your family. Now, let's look at the first area again that you must consecrate to God. And it's called the tongue. The book of Proverbs says, the tongue, although a small member, boasts of great things. Why do we consecrate our tongue? And how do we consecrate the tongue? It's very simple. Daniel 1 verse 8. Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself of the food that the king gave or the wine that he drank. So by not taking what the Lord forbids you to take, this doesn't just have to be alcohol. There are many examples I can give of things that I've seen God forbidding people to do with their mouth or their tongue. I want you to know it is a form of consecration. A few years ago, I dealt with a very complex case. Very complex case. I was in, this, in the middle of the counseling to counsel the person that was affected by this case. <laughs> this person had refused to give her husband oral sex. as a vow to God and it had created an argument how do you even begin to 
help people with a problem like this? It's a consecration. Anything that God demands of you, if he demands it, he will give you the wisdom. And it is the same God that owes the responsibility to explain it to the groom or the other person, if it's a marriage. Now, for me, for instance, I have a vow to not taste alcohol because God speaks prophetic words through my mouth. It's a consecration. So it can be anything you eat. It can be anything you drink. It can be anything you take in or do with that mouth. If God will use it, he would have it consecrated unto him. A consecration is a separation unto God. It is separated because I'm now married to this man, to this groom. I can no longer date other men. I am separated unto this man. In like manner, a person can be consecrated unto his groom called Christ. And when you begin to do that, what God will do for you is that in exchange, your words will begin to carry weight. It will begin to carry weight. Your words can become spirit and life. I receive several messages every day. People would tell me they were listening to a message of mine. They went to bed and the message continued in their dream. And when they woke up, it was as if they continued to listen to what I was still saying. No man can do that by himself. It's a virtue of consecration. That when I say a word over you, it used to be that it will happen either in three days, in three weeks, in three months, or in three years. I could predict it. Now, as a result of my consecration, I can attach a time frame to when I want it to happen. And I will guide the power of God to bring that provision in the exact time frame. If I say within seven days, God will visit you, then God will visit you within seven days. You do this by consecration. When that mouth is so separated unto God, now he can flow through it. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, if he called them gods to whom the Lord, the word of the Lord came, I hope you know you are a God with a small g. It means you have the capacity to function as God does. And that means your words can create life. It can bring things that were not into reality. You can create a reality with your words. There's a level you get to in your consecration. When your mouth and your tongue is consecrated unto God, he will give you that ability to create that reality. You will create it. Your words can create and bring things that were not into life. Such powers are reserved, my friends, for those who have a consecration guiding their tongue. And so you want to save a person's business as a fellow kingdom entrepreneur. And you, you've prayed for them. You've been faithful in praying for them. You continue to pray, but nothing is happening. If you've met the demands of consecration of the mouth, 
I want you to know that you can jump on a call with that person and say by the altar of your consecration with your mouth, I create this reality. And then you attach a time frame. Don't do this if you've not consecrated to God. It won't happen. You'll make a mockery of yourself. But if that consecration truly exists, the power of God will flow towards it. Authority will flow in that direction. The first area every single person must consecrate. That first area, my friends, is your tongue. Then there is the consecration of the body. This is one of the ones that most important that Paul speaks about. The Bible says, but Daniel proposed in his heart, Daniel 1 verse number 8, that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. There are things that can defile your body in such a way that that body that was created to be the temple of the Holy Spirit now becomes desecrated. You will not be able to feel God, hear God. You will not know if it's God speaking to you or another voice. The Bible says there are many voices and all of them have their own significance. But Daniel proposed in his heart. You would use your stubborn will to drive that agenda. That's what that verse means. I hope you know. Daniel proposed there is a holy stubborn that can come over you to drive an agenda to keep your body the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know what you can do. You know what you cannot do knowing fully well that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul looking at the people that are meant to come in this Christian experience. Looking at what will come, what would happen. The abuse. Even in the days of Paul, they were hallowed. But now it's everywhere you turn to. Billboards, TV, phone, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. There is something that can make a person defile themselves in every corner. This is what made the apostle say, say, I'm begging you. I beseech you. I beseech you, brethren. I'm begging you to present your body. Present it as a living sacrifice. And then we are told that Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile his body with the king's meat. Question, what is the king's meat? If we must do this thing properly, there are things that we need to know about. What is the king's meat? So that we can be guided in what we are saying. What is the king's meat? The king's meat represents the pleasures of life. Maybe it's a Friday evening and your friends are going to the club or you are a lady and you live with a group of ladies that are single and they are going to meet with rich men for the weekend, a popular practice in African countries. <clears throat> Perhaps you have some spare change. And because it is the weekend, you feel it's best to call a lady to spend the night with you. The first area we see the kings meet in this day and time to defile a human body is not necessarily physical meat. I hope you know. 
It is that thing that is pleasurable to the eyes. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of mind. Those three things make up the king's needs in 2022 as we speak. But Daniel proposed in his heart. But Damola proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Oh dear. If you're going to propose in your heart, you need to drive your agenda with a holy stubbornness. A holy stubbornness. Let me tell you how powerful the consecration of the body is. Because it's very possible that we underestimate this thing. Many of us get discouraged. We get discouraged after not seeing or hearing anything and all of that and it becomes a mundane practice. You see, the Bible says here, giving us a story about Daniel and his friends. Something I want to point out to you that you should not forget. If you read from verse number 17, well, let's start from verse number 15. At the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men. This is as a result of consecration, just so you know. They appeared better, they appeared fatter in flesh than all the young men. The fatter in flesh there is synonymous for the glory of God radiating through their being. Okay? Who ate the portion of the king's delicacies? Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them the rite of their consecrations. Now verse 17 says, As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge God gave them skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel, who had originally proposed in his heart before the other three, the Bible said he in particular had understanding in all visions and dreams. It is by consecration that we understand some of these things, dreams that people send us. It's a virtue of consecration. Verse 18 very important the bible says now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before nebuchadnezzar the king verse 19 says then the king interviewed them you will be tested and among them all none was found like daniel hananiah mishael and azariah Therefore, they served before the king. Now, pay attention from this verse number 20. Pay attention. Pay attention. The Bible says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them in, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in his realm. He found them 10 times better. <laughs> Guys, a report card was generated after the consecration and the days of their consecration. A spiritual report card came out. The Bible says it was said that this man and his friends were 10 times better. This means that if you picked Daniel eh, and you put him in a room of the people that do the exact same industry practice, maybe they are all in real estate or they are all in the fashion industry, you put 10 of them together in the same room with Daniel, he was 10 times better. 
the sum of the ten of them was put in one man and it was still better than all ten this is the power of consecration the fact that you can stand toe to toe with your colleagues but you are not standing toe to toe with your colleagues an anointing called the ten times better anointing it will rest on your life as a result of the virtue of consecration they won't know what it is about you a glow something something just makes you stand out and when they examine you they will find that indeed you are 10 times better Ten times better. So, you can ask me, how does consecration lead to increase? How does this put money in my purse? We've heard everything you're saying. How does it actually influence our bottom line as entrepreneurs? That's the answer right there. A ten times better anointing. It doesn't rest. That anointing is something that cannot rest on any and everybody it is on those who consecrate to serve a living god the bible says god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit but then he says that they that worship him also must know that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Guys, there are secrets shrouded inside the earth. You, the earthen vessel. Let me tell you something, a secret. The, the consecration of the body has the potential when you begin to propose in your heart with that holy stubbornness it has a potential to transform you into a magnet it will begin to pull things towards you it will pull it can attract your the right partner out of all the girls the guy dates he just sees that you are different there's something different about you within a year he proposes because you've consecrated your body as a living sacrifice and so you will not have sex before marriage it will pull the right partner for marriage it can pull the right partner for business when God begins to see your reasonability in taming your body, at that point, the mingled spirit reacts and he begins to control you. He will put a bridle and begin to steer you in the right direction. This is how it works. I'm telling you the back end of consecration. He will put a bridle. And like how you can direct a horse left, right. He begins to direct your affairs. <laughs> the Bible will tell us that the art of kings is in God's hand. And he turns it with us whoever it pleases him. That scripture is not just a prayer point, my friends. It is for you this for you God can begin to turn your heart because you carry the kingly anointing so your heart is now in God's hands and so the Bible says the heart of a king is in the heart of God, the hands of God and he turns it with us so ever it pleases him you begin to turn your heart, turn you, turn you where you need to go. You begin to guide your affairs. The power of your consecration. From this scripture in Daniel 1 verse number 8, the Bible says that Daniel and his companions, they were 10 times better. 
than those that ate the king's meat. Those that went partying, clubbing, sleeping with men around the whole place. Doing everything that pertains to the pleasures of life. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. That thing that they thought they were losing or that looked to the world like they were losing by purposing in their heart to not defile themselves with the king's meat actually became a gain that was translated to a ten times better anointing. A rare grace. A very rare grace. It's not just saying that they were far better. You could have said that in scripture. They were ten times better. All from consecration. So when it looks like you are losing by not partaking in that scene, that pleasure, you are in fact winning. This is what happens when the Holy Spirit takes over you. The quality of their spirit man the possibilities attached to it were 10 times better. Is what that thing was talking about. Hmm. Now, let me look at this to help you understand it again as we begin to round up. You see, I want to look at it critically from the perspective of a marriage. Because when we say that they were 10 times better, I want us to fully understand what it really means. The 10 times effect in scriptures is only ever seen in the case of a partnership. If you look at the Bible properly, whenever it talks about the 10 times anointing, that effect is only ever seen in the in the scenario of a marriage or a partnership. The Bible tells us one will chase a thousand. One will chase a thousand. And then it says two will chase ten thousand. So one chases a thousand. Two chases ten thousand. This means that a consecration or a consecrated person, although single, that person can enjoy the effect of unity even without being married yet. How is it possible? Could it be that when you consecrate and the Holy Spirit takes over, a marriage is birthed in the Spirit, one between you and the Spirit of God? Psalm 91 says, A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand. It will not come near me. I will only look with my eyes and I will see the recompense of the wicked. Hmm. So consecration can also lead to protection. It can lead to vengeance from God. God taking vengeance on your behalf. A thousand may fall at my side. 10,000, the 10 times anointing now, again, from consecration, at my right hand, it will not come near me. I would only look with my eyes. And as I look, I will see the recompense, what God will do to punish the wicked. So what you are telling me is that if I consecrate and I do it properly, God can begin to avenge my cases on my behalf. The Lord himself fighting your battle. All because you took a decision to consecrate and separate yourself to Jesus. The key of what I'm telling you is to consecrate to the point where the Spirit of God takes over. And begins to turn your heart to wherever it pleases him. Because you are that king whose heart is in the hand of the Lord. That he can stare like a bridle in the house, mouth of a horse, to whithersoever I please at him. 
And any area you consecrate, may I tell you that you subdue the flesh in that area and you block the outflow of spiritual energy that your vessel was designed to contain at any and every particular time. Hmm. I will just summarize the last one. The last one, so we can end and move on, is the consecration of the wheel. The consecration of the wheel. Your wheel. This one is a choice you make to restrict yourself so as to birth the purposes of God in your family, in your business, through your business, in your generation. The Bible says that Daniel would pray to his God three times a day at appointed times. Very quickly, Victoria, give me Daniel 3, verse 1 to 2. Daniel 3, verse 1 to 2. Quickly, Daniel 3. says Daniel would pray to his God three times a day. But I want to show you something that may help you. It's no secret that Daniel would often pray and all of that. But this scripture says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, oh dear, what happened? Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. What is the description? The height was three score cubits. That is, it was 60 cubits. The breadth was six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Verse 2 says, then Nebuchadnezzar the king sends to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. What a funny man. You see, when we talk about the consecration of your will, we are given the story, if you read down, you will see that the reason why people got in trouble, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was because they would not bow to this image of gold that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They would not bow. It was a consecration of their will. They used that holy stubbornness to drive their agenda to serve God. But more important than that, because when we see the word king in scriptures, it sometimes refers to the kingly anointing. Many of us, looking at how ridiculous Nebuchadnezzar is, many of us have done the exact same thing Nebuchadnezzar has done. He made an image of gold. That image of gold, its height was 60 cubits, three score. The breadth was six cubits. When you multiply 60 times 6, you get 360. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then he called everybody to come to dedicate the image which he, the king, had set up. 360 degrees. Everywhere you turn, there is an image of gold, an idol you have created with your will something that you do or something that you don't do and everywhere you turn 360 degrees that thing is an image of gold you might as well be bowing down to it when it comes to the consecration of our will it is important to know that it can take any form any form at all any form. 
the time you could have spent watching TV or working or doing something else, you spend that time praying to your God, using your will to drive a kingdom agenda. It's your will. When Paul says, I beseech you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When we look at what else is living inside of us, you will come to the conclusion that the one thing that is very alive in every kingdom entrepreneur is our will. Our will. Our will is more alive than our love for God. So you bring that thing on the altar of consecration and you nail your will to the cross. You would have watched the next show of Sopranos or something that is interesting on TV. But you take that consecration seriously. Instead of watching that thing, you've nailed your will to the cross. Now you begin to pray. Use it to pray. You can even have set times that you consecrate to pray. Maybe you pray every three hours or every four hours or every six hours. Or you pray at night or you pray long prayers. These are consecrations tied to your will. The Bible says Daniel would pray to his God three times a day at appointed times. That's a consecration of the will. And what was the aftermath? As this man did it for many, many years, what was the power of this consecration? A day came that the heathen queen read the curriculum vitae of Daniel. I wish we had time. Oh, the way she said it was, was beautiful. She said, there is a man in your kingdom. When the hand appeared to the king for defiling the items away from the temple of God, and the hand wrote on the wall, they couldn't find someone to interpret that writing. And so they called Daniel. And when he came, what the woman, the, the, the queen mother said about him, was directly tied to his consecration of his will because he had prayed at set times three times or so a day using his will driving that agenda with god what she said was this there is a man in thy kingdom in whom dwells the spirit of the holy gods my goodness light and understanding is found in this daniel so that he has the ability to explain hard sentences. Oh dear. The power of your consecration. The power of your consecration. Light and understanding is found in this Daniel. In this Damola. There is a commodity called light. And understanding it is found in him because of the virtue of consecrating his will to pray at set times to God instead of watching the latest TV show. Oh dear. Daniel served three or four kings. All because he will not defile himself with the king's meat. Of course, at this time, he had been promoted several, I hope you know. But look at what that constant and disciplined practice of consecration produced in a regular man, an ill not for that matter. Light and understanding. Light and understanding dwells in this man. My God. When an unbeliever begins to recite your curriculum vitae, uh, no, no, you're doing something right. You're doing something right. In my opinion, the consecration of one's will is perhaps the hardest. And that's because it takes discipline and it takes time for the result to show like it did here for Daniel. This guy, when this thing was being read, had served three kings already. You can imagine how many years. He was an old man. Or you can start small and you can grow steadily in that discipline. 
It's all about conceding your will unto God so that God's kingdom can gain more ground in this world. When you begin to practice what I'm telling you, it will look like you're wasting your time because your brain will be questioning your decision. You will see your friends enjoying the pleasures of the king's meat. But all because you have pledged allegiance to a king whose reality has possessed you. You can't do certain things. You start small, you go big from there. Did you know that a woman can consecrate her womb through her will? Every three years, I, I change my car every three years. I'm used to the practice. I would change and buy a new car and all of that. Would have apportioned the down payments to do that and, you know, would just trade the car and get a newer car. And then I was due to do this last year. And the appetite had just died in me. And I took the font. I said, Lord, what would you want me to do with this? And he said, sow it into a few ministries. And I did that. I sowed that font. I, I sowed those funds into a few ministries. Conceding your will to allow God's will, God's kingdom, gain preeminence. You restrict your will so that God's will can take over. That's what the consecration of the will does. And so, you can, with that holy stubbornness, consecrate your womb, if you're a woman on this altar. You tell God, if it be your will, let this womb birth apostles. Let this womb birth prophets. Let this womb birth evangelists. You make a vow. If you give me a child, I will give him back to you. That is the consecration of your will. Oh dear, time has gone. Let us end. I hope you've been able to learn something about the power of your consecration. That when you consecrate to God, you are not wasting your time. Every kingdom entrepreneur called into marketplace ministry must consecrate their tongue, must consecrate their body, must consecrate their will. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I ask that you expound these words in the hearts of your people. Let your kingdom come in the hearts and the lives of men as it is in heaven thank you for the love of your word bring us closer as we begin to consecrate teach us what you are saying every single day and time that we offer ourselves a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you that it will be said that damola proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself the king's meat. Father, be it from us to defile our temples, our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let it be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Thank you, Father. We love you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, <laughs> God bless you all. God bless you. Have a nice day. Thank you.